What walls of water. What winds, what thunder. What a horrible earthquake. What a frightening sound of the sea and what howling of a great people. These words by the great Italian poet Petrarch describe a strange storm over the city of Naples in the 14th century. It's an early testimony to man's fear in the face of the destructive power of nature. 700 years later, the volcanologist Mara Rosi, who works on emergency plans for the city of Naples, was intrigued by Petrarch's description. If earthquakes and fault ruptures cause most tsunamis, volcanic eruptions can also trigger them. Petrarch was the exceptional witness of a phenomenon that struck the city of Naples. He was sleeping, not far from the port, when he heard strange noises so powerful that he thought it was an earthquake. Petrarch ran towards the port, like the majority of the population, and saw with his own eyes the port completely devastated. Along with the destruction, Petrarch reports hundreds of deaths and dozens of sunken ships. According to Mauro Rosi, this strange storm is clearly a tsunami. At that time, Petrarch could not have known that it was a tsunami, since they were unknown in the Middle Ages. Now, today, we know for sure that this phenomenon was caused by a tsunami. To determine if such a tragedy could be repeated today, the volcanologist is looking for the source of the tsunami that devastated the port of Naples in 1343. But there is no historical account of an eruption of Vesuvius, the famous volcano that dominates Naples in the 14th century. So Mara Rosi focuses his attention on another volcano, one of the most active in the region, Stromboli. But it's located 200 kilometers from Naples. In 2002, an eruption caused the collapse of one of its walls generating a 10-meter-high wave all around the island. The wave spread through the Tyrrhenian Sea and, although very weak, reached the Bay of Naples. Could it be that a much larger eruption on Stromboli triggered the tsunami described by Petrarch 700 years ago? On the slopes of the volcano, archaeologist Sarah Levy excavates the remains of a small collapsed church. She provides Mara Rosi with his first clues. We know that a dramatic event occurred due to the sudden collapse of the building, probably caused by a powerful earthquake, because large blocks of stone were found inside on the floor of the church. In order to date the past activity of Stromboli, archaeologists examined three skeletons found in the remains of the church. The skeleton was in a grave pit that was dug through the layer of collapsed tiles that fell down when the church collapsed. So this person was definitely a witness um, of the catastrophe, possibly a victim, possibly a survivor. This skeleton has been dated by carbon-14 in the middle decades of the 14th century. The date of the earthquake that shook the island of Stromboli coincides with a disaster in the Bay of Naples, described by Petrarch. Yet another detail reveals the magnitude of the event. When the church collapsed, it was not rebuilt, which is surprising and indicates a major change in human occupation at this location. It is likely that the island was abandoned until the 1600s. This dramatic event was so violent that for more than 200 years, 10 generations, the island of Stromboli remained unoccupied. Following these revelations, Mara Rosi starts his own excavations. He wants to find clues linking the activity of the volcano to the tsunami described by Petrarch in 1343. At a depth of more than four meters, the volcanologist finally uncovers a fabulous deposit. This deposit of tsunami is of great length. This tsunami deposit is by far the largest we've ever found. 
and we've dated it to 1350, as evidenced by the materials in it. Look at the size of these perfectly round rocks. They must have come from the beach. The presence of such consistent elements proves that the tsunami was driven by an extraordinary force. All the facts coincide. The powerful wave that projected these rocks 200 meters from the beach occurred at precisely the same time as the earthquake that destroyed the small church on the island. For Mara Rosie, there is a clear link between the eruption of the volcano and the tsunami, La Sciara del Fuoco. It is on this impressive slope that all the volcanic material ejected by Stromboli accumulates. 700 years ago, following an eruption, the volcanologist believes that the Chiara del Fuoco suddenly shed its millions of tons of accumulated debris, causing a tsunami that spread to the Bay of Naples. Given the current activity of Stromboli, it's assumed that the level of detritus on the Chiara del Fuoco would be comparable to that of the Chiara at the time Petrarch describes the tsunami. For Mara Rosie, the landslide caused by the 2019 eruption is a harbinger of a much more serious disaster to come. The Chiara del Fuoco could collapse into the sea at any moment. The island of Stromboli is monitored 24 hours a day to alert the authorities, inhabitants, and tourists. But what about Naples? What would be the consequences of a tsunami hitting a city of one million inhabitants? The population is completely unaware that a tsunami from Stromboli could hit Naples. In the case of infrequent natural phenomenon, people tend to believe that there is no imminent danger. Researchers at the University of Bologna have made a model of the path of the 1343 tsunami. It gives an idea of what could happen today. It would take barely 30 minutes for the tsunami to leave Stromboli and hit the Gulf of Naples. And here, the consequences would be unbelievable. All the boats in the harbor behind me would be thrown into the streets. The water would rush into the subway and drown its occupants. The streets full of people would be submerged. It would really be an apocalyptic scenario if we weren't able to sound the alarm. 